Good evening and welcome to the first lecture from the Videogram series. Uh, tonight with Lorenz Borsas. Uh, first, the quick organization. The lecture will be around one and a half hour together with the Q&A. Uh, after my short intro, I will pass the floor to Lila and Jano, and uh, they will start with the presentation. And then after the presentation, there will be the space for the Q&A. You can ask the questions directly or just uh, write uh, them to the chat, and I will later pass them to our guests. So Lorenz Borsos is neither an individual nor a duo, not a husband, nor a wife, art, and anti-art. Lorenz Borsos denotes a condition in which this position can come into union and the convolution that flows from this union, they explore the position and meaning of the identity of the artist, which is still linked in Hungarian cultural thinking to its neo-romantic image. Through a shared practice, they create mythologies mocking the emptiness of the position of the author as a genius. The common element here is the almost maniacal over, overuse of the black enamel. Black enamel is at once the color and the material reflecting light as much as it absorbs it, and through which is vandalized the meaning of figuration in order to demonstrate the faceless bipolar mass formed by the coexistence of opposites. The installation of objects in Lorenz Borsa's practice reveal the anxieties, depressions, and precarity associated with the contemporary art world. And now I would like to pass the floor to our guest, Lila Indiano. Thank you and welcome. Hey, Jan, thank you for the introduction. Hi, everybody. Thank you hey. for being in our studio tonight. Yeah, this is our studio in the background. And uh, yeah, so we are glad to be here and uh, we're going to try to walk you through. Uh, our practice, um, which is, uh, well, it had few radical changes in the last 20 years. I'm afraid we can talk about 20 years already. So um, yeah, it, it's gonna be a little bit like a linear presentation, uh, starting with a very early age uh, when we were like 20 year olds and uh, still in the university. And uh, even before, huh? No. Even before, no, no, no. Let's start with that. So I think uh, we can start with uh, our first uh, uh, image, which is more or less a text. The first image, image is learning portraits, neither one nor two. <laughs> yes, this one. Okay, so the second image is kind of like uh, our newest manifesto, so what we believe in uh, now and what is crystallized from these 20 years that we've been working together in many different collaborations. And I think I will read this out loud, although I know it's boring, but I think it's important. Uh, in a socially overloaded and crippled state, the individual needs help from other miserable people. The individualist type of artist has failed we depend on each other. The aim of the artist is to operate a creative collective with a flexible structure on the local level in the spirit of individual survival, mutual knowledge, inspiration, and ed education as an alternative to the depressive hedonism of the individual crippled by the late capitalist system. We know very well Mark Fisher. Training in exposure to interdependence, praising diversity, experiencing elementary wonder from a new point of view, born during collaborations and channeling it into creation instead of a central ideology or hierarchy. And as you will see, I think we've been through um, many different stages of, of, of this, uh, this idea. Mm. And uh, we should start uh, with uh, showing you what kind of um, social experiences we had. And the very first one um, that we want to talk about is called the corporation. And this was an artist group that was formed in early 2000. 
and this is the logo of the group. Um, and the group consisted of only four men. <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> for the first time, yes. Um, it was rather a boy group, kind of. And uh, it just, uh, it, it was brought together because we all felt like I was there too. I mean, like- um, Definitely from the beginning, actually. In the background, uh, nameless and uh, hidden. But also for me and uh, for all of us, I think the main importance to form this group was because we felt uh, very much isolated uh, while we were in the university. Uh, and it was really like a divided structure that we experienced there. You know, you, we had these all different departments of painting, graphic design or whatsoever. And there was not so much uh, movement or flexibility in between these uh, mediums uh, and, and uh, departments. So uh, two guys from the painting department, two guys from the graphic design department decided to you know, get over all of this uh, dividends and uh, form a group uh, for whom the most important thing was create event-based, um, like, Gesamtkunstwerk uh, kind of ideas. And um, in the beginning, it was a bit hard to manage with the time and uh, uh, because we didn't have really much experience, but we got a lot of help from our friends. And uh, sometimes this group uh, grew into like 30 people for making like a festival event, like a week long event also. You can see images that we just dropped in. We also worked together with um, um, like people from theater, contemporary dancers, and I think this was really, really uh, an important experience as a, in a very young age uh, that you can, you know, like relate to really different artistic approaches and, you know, it just keeps you really um, flexible in a way. So I have to say that uh, for the beginning, at the beginning of this uh, collaboration, it was a big effect for us that uh, there was a film in the television in the time there was no internet internet so like the the effects are came from like from whispers from television from books and so on and from your own experience when you were into a like a trip to see an exhibition in hungary or in abroad and in that time in 19 uh, six, there was a film in the television about uh, Neue Slovenische Kunst, uh, which, which was a big, big effect, like, let's say. But uh, I didn't know nothing about Neue Slovenische Kunst, no Leibach and uh, the other groups uh, forming together this whole idea to like, use the idea of the whole um, <clears throat> state as an artistic uh, approach. And uh, like, uh, we didn't know the background of it. We just knew that something has happened in, in uh, Slovenia, which was uh, very interesting. And we just uh, super misunderstood everything about it, but we really liked the, the image, imagery of their actions with uh, appropriate the, the logos of the Mr. Animal Rensek oppressive system and the logos and the imagery of the oppressive systems and we just used it and started to use it uh, to form a very strong identity of ourselves and uh, it is part of my doctoral uh, mm -hmm. thesis and uh, like the, the research and uh, i have to thank to mr alexei mongo who helped me to find this video because it was just in the memory what I almost forgot from, from, from now. And uh, he is very into NSK and live up. He has a lot of books about this topic and this uh, very interesting uh, form of uh, artistic uh, collaborative Gazam Kunstler kind of work. Yes. So, uh, but, our problem with it, it was too big for ourselves from the beginning to work with 30 people sometimes. And 
we didn't know anything about our kind of voice in there, like what is our aim, what we bring to the collaborative work. And it was too big chaos, too much loudness. I don't know. And we somehow was uh, eaten by the whole thing. And at one point, uh, I felt like I had to escape from it. And uh, we actually escaped from the this collaboration to the ideology, let's say, Christian ideology. One of the guys from the corporation had this experience in the church of faith before and we had a lot of like uh, um, mm, conversations about it and uh, somehow it turned out to be like we changed our perspective and we wanted to research on the topic more so we became like fundamental <laughs> uh, christians for like this. for a while like started as a field field chip but it uh, we just uh, went to the trap and lost ourselves for like almost eight years this is the uh, one video which is shows how we changed the ideology or and the logo somehow into something uh, not really new. <laughs> but i think uh so during these years, let's say from 2000 until 2004, like Jano said, we were trying to find ourselves also, but already kind of dissolving in a bigger um, community, let's say. And the ways that we were living was really like a, a co communal community, like uh, living in one space and experiencing everything together, using a lot of... Uh, supplements so to say and experimenting experimenting you know, like... with our minds and souls and spirits and whatsoever and i think in that very young age um you are really uh, easily um influenced by really um concrete ideologies uh and i think that is what happened to us um but we are still kind of uh, exploring how this whole change in our lives could uh, happen like this radical in a in, in a really radical way um since that that time i mean like almost 20 years now we are the processing otherwise hows of this but the main thing how why we dropped into this whole new situation is like we didn't want it to be the the audience or, or just examining somebody or the others what what is going there with their life but we really wanted to really jump in and uh, like uh, experience it first hand first hand and this this work is like made in that time and just uh, an example what is uh, what does it mean uh, censorship in the church the first uh, picture on the left side was made by myself like uh, about uh, the research on the topic and the right one is uh, after the censorship they didn't like the the photo the half naked photo of myself it, they they told told uh, it is too uh, occult they didn't like the red color either because it's like hellish and uh, i also removed one naked picture from on the right a and, drawing. and a drawing yeah and the cross from the ass of this guy was uh, put in, in in front of the the figure just uh, just an example um, this this time was about uh, working with the community, not really about making art, actually, although we try to collect those people who are like to make some creative work in, in, the, in the church. It wasn't so successful because like we have to feel like ideology killed creativity because you always uh, like examine the thing that uh, if it is uh, good, or not it is it is possible to make how if, if jesus would approve yeah and like always end up uh, you you can do some gray 
without any meaning kind of propaganda for the church or for Jesus Christ and wasn't about really really creative and, and, and free artistic uh, process so so it was really really fun let's say but like uh, the although also could, could make some some works one of this laser work is like uh, about holy trinity like the father uh, um, projects projects sun on the other side with the same laser diodes um, but i think this work it was important because otherwise we were doing this missionary kind of uh, work uh so you were only there for the community and otherwise it was not really relevant what we were doing from your own you know, mind and from your own will uh, and want. So uh, I think this work that Yano was showing, this laser work was really important because even though everything was against uh, doing your own uh, individual practice, he was uh, really wanting to do that. And it took a lot of uh, effort and years, years maybe also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, uh, this work was made make it. like through five years, I don't know, like <laughs> researching, think about. And, yeah. yeah, and also and it's coming back into our practice. So otherwise, as you can see on the picture, we tried to infiltrate a little bit of a performative act into the missionary uh, situations. Uh, and this meant uh, that we were doing all these, you know, like speaking into the microphone, and saying the God's word on the streets. And uh, yeah, we found this uh, physical propaganda. verse and then we turn it into um, kind of like a performance. The main goal was like really to make it like really a catchy, you know, when somebody passes by, you like, cannot really go like the design without noticing. of the propaganda is uh, went a little bit more professional. And I think that they are still using, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like a Mondiakas for you, your franchise. It's a, yeah. it's a franchise system, they are they're using still this performance all over Hungary with a different kind of music. It was, first it was like very noisy techno and ambient together, but now they're using the different texts and different music, of course, different uh, words after. Just uh, some pictures of the thing, like festival missions. And this is a very ugly kind of, uh, you know, it's like a Pentecostal church means there is no a church actually you just use a, a big spaces or like a, um, of schools and, and other other buildings just coming together without any aesthetics let's say just very normal very very basic, basic kind of it's aesthetics. like a nomadic state of being also yeah and also like our uh situation like uh being together was totally overwritten by this Christian ideology that uh, you must, uh, you know, um, make your relationships clean in the eyes of God, and then you have to, um, you know, uh, like and you know, make it properly. And then we got married Sorry. in two thousand four. Uh, so we really wanted to do everything right uh, in this uh, system, uh, this whole world view that we were trying to share and adapt to. But as a side note, we have to say that uh, from this point of view, we also started to examine a little bit uh, the cult, the phenomenon of the cults, how they... Uh, how they operate and and how they become uh, to be a cult. So what yeah, like a, a cult or a sect is always like a, some kind of a renewal uh, movement movement uh, which is coming from a bigger kind of a religious group and uh, like to make it more faster or different. So after a while, uh, it is uh, detaching. It is become detached from the the main uh, group and start a new kind of uh, group like really detached from it and uh, you can see examples in the bible also like uh, 
Abraham on the picture doing something which is against the whole kind of uh, ethics uh, and uh, uh, to kill the, his own son is a you can read it from the aspect of the cult let's say Jesus Christ also was somebody who is who was against uh, like seemed like against to the or like Jewish uh, kind of uh, practice let's say Paul was somebody who was really against Jews from at one point he turned into a Christian to the re rebellious uh, kind of uh, little group which was uh, like a sect in that time seemed like a sect after of course in the middle yeah, ages yeah. Uh, like those were really against the whole religious kind of attitude so they were start, started to like burned <laughs> and stuff <laughs> and some some new examples i mean from the last uh, like 2000 years of uh, before 2000 somehow from the mostly from the us uh, region there were a lot of different kind of cult which were more destructive let's say because uh, not every card or not every sect is destructive but uh, when you you are the patterns when you are in a group which is deta detached from the world let's say using own language there is a leader it's very big potential there's a very big potential to be monopolized and to be to create a world which is totally like distorted from from reality and there are many examples for it people can people stample with uh, this guy jim jones oh, yeah. started very nicely this guy was fighting for in the in the time when, when the communists were were really uh, i mean the, the nation was against communism in, uh, in the us and he was fighting for uh, for the black people to equal right equal rights yeah, that they, they they could be in the church also like accepted the black people so black people really loved, liked him but uh he became super paranoid after a while and drugs came somehow and he was into build the whole new world somewhere in in south uh, america turned into su suicides of almost 1000 people we know some other examples heaven's gate also suicides like in connection with the helibop uh, comet which were came super designed uh, in suits they used and this color and the uh, nike shoes and other uh, like aesthetics uh, in connection with, with buddhism and uh, like spiritual uh, the new world turned into like uh, raping and uh, <laughs> Michael, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson also has, has a coat here or the jacket which is uh, the same jackets are here I mean the same designer who who is here mm -hmm. with, the, with the wife being uh, like uh, after a while uh, the whole church was made these jackets and they sold it very big prices in hollywood this church was into hollywood and then this guy went to prison for for underage uh how to say like he was taking an advantage of yeah, underage yeah, 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 yeah. and i just would like to pass over this he also had the root in some of the some of the cults but uh, came out and this is Koresh was really uh, experienced experienced the end of the world by by the American like, like it was this kind of CIA attack and everything was burned out oh and he's okay. Osho was a very well-known Rolls Royce collector and uh, other examples are just popping up <laughs> like uh, how is very easy to distort world with the same patterns this guy is uh, very famous 
not about the color of the, the, the shirt. shirt, not about the very nice kind of view from the sea in the background, but the staring, not, not even the, the hair, long, long hair, but to stare people and people like uh, stare back uh, stare and back and somehow <laughs> healing so this is the this is a staring prophet <laughs> and like the the structure is very like the pyramid kind of uh, structure which uh, you can see <laughs> everywhere and it's like 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 this is a very trashy kind of example and other people who are saying that that they are jesus the, christ the real jesus christ and uh, Hungarian no nowadays, like uh, with uh, pop stars turning into very obscure kind of uh, viewpoints they have, like and, uh, <laughs> and we reached <laughs> the, the parliament. The Hungarian government also is uh, really like a, like a cult. Everybody who is like has the same patterns in a way, somehow. That uh, if you are into the game, that you are privileged. If you are not, you are fun. You are out. So we uh, need to remind ourselves uh, all the time, uh, being aware of what can go wrong, what can happen. Um, and we are still uh, doing that. It course. was a nice experience uh, otherwise. like Yes, yes, definitely. We are thankful for being in uh, this situation, although it was a lot, lots of years. And then we have to jump into uh, 2010, when uh, after ideolo ideologically being broken apart, the corporation got reunited and the whole um, um, beautiful uh situation that the corporation could reunite in was actually uh the last uh, uh exhibition uh held in the Kunsthalle by former director uh George Petrani um and uh, the title of the exhibition was no one belongs here, here more, more than, than you. you it's about uh, like collaborative works coming to the exhibition and uh, forming almost like a state, let's say, or, or like a, a city, a city with all, all these different kind of functions. Uh, you you could uh, like talk with people. You could eat. You could also like um, build something. There was a, a workshop. There was a kitchen. There was a garden inside the Kunsthalle. And the beautiful uh, architecture of the Kunsthalle, which is kind of like this uh, basilica uh, structure, uh, gave us the idea to be present in the building in the city itself as a church. Uh, the priests and uh, doing all performative acts uh, as if uh, it was really a functioning church. Like so we had specific like, objects as in, as in the church. We have the altar, we have the, yes, the confessional. confessional room. You could give us money. <laughs> there was the sacred water at the big, like when you enter. Entrance, yes. Also, fog yes. machine as yeah. uh, everything. Uh, and yeah. actually, it was performative uh, because every uh, Sunday there was also a mass that we gave. And there were uh, like from from the pulpit, which was uh, this uh, um, spaceship. spaceship or a space rocket shaped uh, elevating system that we built from everything that we found in, in the Kunsthalle's basement. Uh, and the closing event, and that's why it's more or less the most important for us, was a party that we were able to make. The, the, the name was Techno Synod. And for a, after a really long time of pause, uh, because in the beginning for the corporation, it was also a very important thing to throw parties or techno parties or something like that. Because like we figured it out that when we started to work with the corporation, it, it never was in a gallery space. It was always, somehow connected to the party scene, we, we felt like there is a big gap be be between the art uh, scene and the, and the people. 
and uh, we felt like uh, we don't want to, to make the people come to us or like uh, being in a very isolated situation and waiting for the people but uh, we thought okay we are if the people are maybe at the parties then we have to go to the parties and we have to make parties and so on so we were like there somehow and this uh, like this Kunsthalle exhibition was one of the first exhibition what we made in within the walls of a gallery or, the, or, a, or a museum. And we wanted to put the party inside, of course. And although there were not so many people, but I think it was a successful event. It was very loud. It was definitely very loud. And in meanwhile, uh, we also had to reduce um, while the corporation was still apart in 2008 we decided to make the really like the smallest uh, collaboration that we can and that was just between the two of us so actually i think in 2008 was the time when we uh sort of uh naming our collaborative practice, uh, learning Sporshorsh, which is a really badly chosen name because it's a very, very uh, hardly, uh, like really hard to pronounce uh, and everybody outside of Hungary is struggling with it. So, but whatever. Fungary. That seems like a real name and like it, the name is not something you choose, but it is given, so. <laughs> so we went with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, it is also important to say, like we reduce the numbers of the collaborative, collaborative persons and uh, we reduce the medium also. It, it was not about the uh, Gazdankunst like at the beginning. We reduced it for just one work on the wall, like a painting, how to have our own voice in a very little reduced situation to find our voice, let's say. But at that time, we were also being like really uh, pushed into a very hard situation with a lot of our colleagues and uh, comrades and uh, peers because of the political system change in 2010 when Orban Victor won the elections and Fidesz party came in government. So we and, started to cry. And uh, yeah, we cried for a long time because of this. So we started to focus on, on because we felt somehow kind of like a responsibility as being an artist. And we had this idea of, of maybe being able to have an effect on the system and feeling this kind of pressure that you have to be meaningful and you have to care about these things that are happening and uh, you have to be outside all the time and on the protests and also with your works, with, with everything you do, you need to protest against this whole system change that was really, really uh, deconstructing everything that uh, we thought that is based like in Hungary, like in the cultural, uh, system and everywhere they changed everything from the constitution to every little detail in the last 12 years and uh, little by little uh, we were experiencing that we have no effect at all but the first work that we did uh, in our first uh, solo exhibition this what you can see here the title is uh, immovable land and the idea of the work is uh, we build the uh, maquette model of the Hungarian parliament out of clay, which was only like dry clay. And uh, it was placed on a vibrating table. So when you went uh, close to the, to the work itself, then it began to shake and the whole structure was like an earthquake moved uh, by your closeness to it and it started to deteriorate uh, like slowly not so fast as some people wanted it to but um so i think this put kind of like a label or we put a label on ourselves uh for a while like being the political artist or uh socially 
uh, engaged artists, uh, uh, which was a very important thing at that time. Um, but we also figured after a while that we also have to be, we have to be self-reflective. Self so this uh, self-reflectiveness uh, um, brought to life a project that we did for three long years or more, four maybe, from 2013 until 2016, uh, which was titled Self-Critical Portrait. But I don't really want to go into that, but it also involved couple therapy and uh, involved another painter from the corporation that was Santalecki. We worked with a curator, blah, blah, blah. So it was a long process and uh, without knowing what is going to, where it's going to end up and where it will leave us. Uh, and I think it is, was really an important practice that we had to make beside of being labeled as the political artist. Um, and I think this was the thing that saved us from going a little bit crazy uh, and dig and ourselves yeah, too deep in this uh, unaffectedness. Uh, yeah, and it saved us from this apathetiqueness, I think. And what we really found, um, but at the beginning it was kind of like by chance or like, by only the aesthetics of it, but the black enamel paint was really a, an important uh, logo for us. Uh, and the most important uh, quality of this thing is that it's like two extremes. It's totally dark and it's totally reflective also because it's a shiny quality. And we figured it's really symbolic uh, in these times for us, um, looking into like this dark mirror. Um, and like uh, helping us to stay on the edge, not to belong to this kind of dead end, like as a cult is a dead end in a way, like a bubble. This material is uh, more like uh, the edge between bubbles, let's say, like be between darkness and, and the shiny shyness <laughs> yeah and um, the name black is coming from a very like uh, ancient english language in that time they, they they used two words for the color black one was the swart and the other was black and the swart was the the matte uh, black and the other one was the shiny and we used it so we we after the therapy we started to focus more on this color and uh, on on the, like the first uh, religious pictures, like uh, paintings from the old masters came out and we just blacked out uh, the, the figures more and more um, symbolically, like, uh, I mean, geometrical cutouts came, came out. And uh, then like we wanted to make it with a real, like living painters, work and we had the possibility to work with Imre Bak who is very famous for his uh, organic uh, geometrical abstract uh, way of uh, art practice and uh, during the off biennial the first in 2016 we were able to ask Mr. Imre <laughs> Yeah, so we got like a real original um, uh, serigraphy. Sorry, it was a serigraphy. He From won, won 67. the 67. Yeah. Sorry. 67. He won the Ljubljana Biana with this series, actually. And he just gave it to us as a um, gesture of uh, like collaborative work within different generations. And uh, he wanted to raise himself like uh, it was, uh, it happened before with uh, between Rauschenberg and the Konin. You know this very famous work of, uh, let's say, Rauschenberg, which is a erased de Konin work. He was just asking for a work of de Konin to erase it, and uh, he with a rubber he made it uh, empty on I mean, the the paper. And Imrovak was the one who said he was really into become erased from the 
the younger generation. So we were that. We were that. the ones, let's say. But I think we can yeah. jump over other words like... which were not really just Hungarian focused, but more kind of post. So our experience was with this and I'll claim that it could really like uh deliver many messages in different contexts. So we kind of like started to build up our own art artistic identity through this uh, specific material, but in many, I think in a very, very way. So, um, and still like being very political, we had the series of flags and we were censored and we became like um, kind of, again, known a little bit more through this uh, scandal that, uh, we've been censored in our like a Hungarian institution because we in, are in Austria, in Austria, Vienna. In Vienna, yes. Um, so, but this is all just important to show that uh, even though our main focus and main, like the most important thing for us was collaboration, we started to build up this identity of learning forces, uh, really um, kind of like, uh, to the fashion, like uh, consciously. consciously also, but also driven by some things that were just really by chance happening to us. So um, after seven years, we, we started to work together. The time uh, just came to face to this uh, church uh, period of our lifetime. And the first time we started to use it, use our critical approach to it, to the topic. And uh, there is this uh, quotation from G.K. Chesterton from the introduce, introduction to the book of Job. God will make man see things if it is only against the black background of non-entity. And there was this exhibition that we made in 2016, our, like a solo show in a bigger institution in Dunajváros, Hungary. And uh, we devoted the whole exhibition to the to this kind of uh, like spontaneous and whatever it can come uh, about of this black enamel paint. So, and also examining the, the chaos and saying that, uh, the creation is not finished and God didn't really do a good job. <laughs> so I think- like, like you can see somehow like uh, when in the corporation we accused ourselves or the other artists not to be able to work together. Then, then in the, the church was also like the, the man who can be super like manipulative and you are not, critical enough to say no to questions and just uh, floating through years. After we started to work together, it was the politicians uh, being accused. And now in this exhibition in 2016, or it was a time to point, point a little bit higher. Yeah, That's so it. we're gonna jump through these images that we selected from this exhibition. Um, we don't have the time to go uh, deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took out the the devil from the Bible. From the job, the book of job, yeah. And we we found some some very famous um, um, change catastrophe catastrophes within the the history. Like random, we picked up those ones where. God somehow uh, making the, the job being seen so as like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, help me, please. <laughs> like, what you want to say. Oh, compromise. When he compromising compromise him, himself. Com himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. we put words in, in, in his mouth, like, Never ending story. There was the fan with the animal paint and on the wall. It, it is the, the image from the book of Job where God enters in the picture with, uh, with the image of a whirlwind, whirlwind and uh, we use that uh, tornado image here 
and uh, with the drops, the the words uh, came to the wall. And we like this word very much. <laughs> it's feeling a little bit like uh, satisfied, satisfied in a way. Okay, but we have to jump uh, and you didn't write it correctly because it was in 2015 when we were asked by the, uh, the curators of the first of Pioneer to make uh, an event again a party maybe uh for the off pioneer and i think that was the first uh event that was really satisfying in the sense of like creating a wholeness uh and we uh got together with the guys of uh technologia und das unheimliche which is uh, a group uh consisting of uh, artists and aesthetics and uh so, like Mario Z. Nemes is the, the aesthetic from the group, and uh, Mark Fridwaski is the artist, and Joel Miklos Verdi is another aesthetic, <laughs> like the, the, the bossy kind of guy from the, from the group. And they are acting like not just in Hungary, but uh, in Germany also, and making books and uh, uh, serious events also around the field. And uh, it was really a nice. Yeah, it was refreshing because they could like really put the, the background also behind like the whole concept framing behind the party because the idea was uh, to create a temporary state uh, for one particular night in that techno club. And the whole idea came from Hakim Beige um, or something. Um, it's also connected to NSK very much and other other. Uh acts before us and we also put them into the manifesto and uh, the aesthetics really helped us to put it in the manifesto but uh, i have to say that political terror terrorism is an act of, in a theater of cruelty which has no stage no rows of seats no tickets and no walls and why we made this uh, event on that at that time was because in 2015, I think that was maybe the first uh, national consultation that the government sent out, which was sent out in the form of letters to every citizen. And you could say your, um, um, your opinion about at that time- uh, What are the answered questions? Yes, it was of course written in a very, uh, didactic way so you could not have good answers but the topic was about migration and uh, uh, because that was when the people from Syria and wherever started to come into Europe and of course you all know that Orban Victor's uh, polit politics is totally against uh, migra migrants and migration mm -hmm. and the national consultation was about that and also about terrorism and the acts of terrorists they, and uh, they, they put put them in, in, in one paper like uh, saying as the migrants are terrorists that the big potential of uh, terrorism is uh, because of the migrants yes yeah, so our whole event was dedicated to terrorism and uh, the aesthetics of oppression of, of and to how to and it is going back to nsk like uh, how to over identify identificate ourselves with uh, with those very very frightening for uh, imagery of the terrorism, and we got a, a place called the uh, Lerm Techno Club, and for one day one night we made uh, a state there just for one night with their own with with its own uh, laws. Some I, I I have to put this here. Amely a rendszerkondolkodás militáns és uniformizáló 
Ez azt jelenti, hogy az elnyomó rendszer kívébe jutott ellenállam egyszerre imitálja és leírja az állami erőszak formáját. Vagyis túl gondozza és túl biztosítja az állam kevébe lépőket, ugyanakkor kibiztosítja és egy szükségállapot is fokozza a fegyelmező rendszerek működését. Ez a esztetikai zóna a földkörű technoterrorizmi szerepet, ahol a frustráció praktikai kisajátítók az apokalipszis képállat lehet megjobbatni. Az üdvegháborús propaganda kellékei egyenlő megfigyelés, kondicionálás, a jelentés rombolási kívhagyni, hogy létrejöjjenek a jelek létrejöjjenek a jelek szükségállapítása. Okay, just uh, some introduction to the manifesto. It is a little bit longer, but not for now. We had we had three praxis for that uh, main praxis for the state there. One was like terror praxis, uniform praxis, and surveillance praxis. We installed the whole space a little bit differently than than uh, in average uh, techno event situation is there. And we used those kind of uh, imagery everywhere. Somehow we used very, very uh, strong propaganda before the project. And uh, like uh, this is one video about it. We have like a lot of videos like this. For example, you don't don't need to pay at the entrance, but uh, when you leave the space, and for for that uh, there is a no, there is a law when 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 you are a security guy, you cannot hold back the person who wants to leave. So they were a little bit like uh, um, uh, frustrated. Yeah, a little bit frustrated about it. Everybody used uh, a mask, or the artists and all the people who were attended, but it's more the uniform praxis. And uh, like uh, we reached out for one video from Johan Guimont Press, Guimont Pre, sorry. Like, uh, what is the name of the video? Dial history. Dial history, what we saw before. And we, we had this video and made one room just for showing it for, one, for the whole, whole night. <laughs> well, we had a, a um, what was it? Casting. Casting, yes, also we made a casting. We, we, we need to have a lot of people who, who were there and working for us, let's say, and were working with us. The, he was the youngest. <laughs> right, and, and in the installations, were like one one of the installation was making a room with uh, mirror uh, windows and uh, you could go there and when you are there inside you cannot see that uh, you are somebody who is being surveillanced <laughs> let's say from the, the from outside and of course there was no possibility to make photos within the whole event like in Berghain, of course, not so new thing, but uh, in that situation in Lerm and in the practice of in, in Hungary, like uh, in the topic of uh, uh, techno events, it is not really used. This was the, uh, and because there was no possibility to make photos, I can say, I can show you just uh, the plans of the thing. Uh, we wanted to have like propaganda office during the whole night where this uh, imagery what you can see here is being made and putting on the walls of the techno club all the night this is one uh, on, the, on the main main place we made this uh, plan and uh, we imagined like dancing uh, people like go go boys let's say and we also casted made casting for those and uh, we got people uh, like uh, who wanted to make it and the thing was just uh, using the the 
mask and they they could dance at one point at the event because it was very important that the whole event had a uh, dramaturgy like at one point it, this part was happened and after another one and like uh, the whole night had this uh, uh, character that you, like something is can can be changed at one point and uh, you can missing it if you are not really cautious or like not not really bad yeah and this is one one picture what we uh, got from one guy who made pictures and almost uh, he, he was kicked out because of it but after a while we, we thought that it is very important to have at least one picture from the night it was the beginning with no people so and now we jump into another kind of uh, form of collaboration um but i think we're gonna have to go through this like really quickly um in 2018 uh we had the chance to work together uh with daniel hitler uh and i think it's important because it changed uh, our ways of of uh of dealing with uh our own artistic practice because kind of like uh, a third viewpoint and a third person came into the picture and we started to see like very differently ourselves and the whole uh, idea that we had. Um, like uh, we had this bo learning borshosh between us, let's say like uh, an empty bubble, uh, like a, a place for a character, imaginary person. And when Daniel came to came into the picture, he, he said it would be nice for him to make uh, to turn into this person as real somehow, like a, yeah. like an embodiment, let's say, of the spirit. This came. <laughs> nice picture for that. <laughs> and it was a really nice game, let's say, and they really kicked out. Uh, it was really it, it really kicked out from our position. And uh, it, it, our work became more associative and uh, more uh, experimental. And uh, we started to free ourselves a bit from the very strict concessional yeah, yeah. yeah. So it like the things that we started to make uh, were much more enigmatic, I think. And uh, it also held a lot of surprises for ourselves and that I think is very important because after a while uh, the worst thing that can happen is that you get bored of yourself and what you are doing so uh, I think this is why collaboration and, and opening yourself up to uh, different uh, people and different things is very important uh, because it can show you really new ways and uh after a while um we decided to work uh, again on another name which was actually another name that we named our collective with daniel uh, with daniel and uh, because we... it was like problematic after a while to work like uh, under the name lorenz borsos because uh somehow it, it, it was more equal like we want didn't want it to make it hierarchically and we wanted to kick hierarchy kick, kicked out from the game so we became uh Villa Lorenz and Janos Borsos with Daniel Hitler in one collaboration we had to have another name <laughs> <laughs> okay and we had the possibility to make some show uh, in New York when our, we were in, in a residency program and we invited Daniel to come with us for a while and we had a studio there and uh, we turned the studio into a gallery place and you can see our suicide letters, three of them. It was the act of, uh, um, it is coming from Daniel. He had some uh, experience <laughs> writing suicide letters in, as a form of workshop. And it was the process how we turned into another name from Lorenz Borsos plus Daniel. You cannot uh, read it. <laughs> yeah. But let's jump through this. Um, images, I think. This is the uni like a unity of the three person, let's say. Like uh, having the 
idea from Hermes a lot of times, like the tricker. The trickster dog. Trickster. These things were all collected and found objects uh, from New York or wherever we've been. So we were not prepared, but we thought that since we are artists, we need to be prepared all the time and we need to be able to make art from whatever and wherever. Yeah. So it was a nice that practice. Was the challenge. Yeah, in the uh, corporation, we also had the manifesto. If it, if it was the manifesto clearly written down that the real artist, let's say, can do art whatever, whenever he is and what can, and any kind of material he can reach, like, it is not, not something which is, cannot be happened somehow. You cannot have excuses, you cannot say any kind of excuse for not yeah. making something, yeah. So, and let's go quickly through another exhibition that we made in Brno. It was, uh, I think for us, another um, um, change in the paradigm uh, uh, when we started to really deconstruct uh, this Lurins Borges identity and uh, uh, start uh, using, let's say, um, and it's kind of like, a, it was kind of like a laboratory that we made uh, in the rooms of kids gallery. And uh, with these enigmatic objects, we also kind of like made a map for ourselves that we really didn't know where it leads to, uh, but we definitely needed to have these certain stages. For example, here we have the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, um, I don't know how many, um, what is this? It's a manifesto. Something. Manifesto of the Alcoholics Anonymous, and we kind of uh, like altered it uh, with uh, censoring the higher uh, mm -hmm. being, God itself. And somebody is tortured here, but we let showed him uh, escape route being elsewhere from the marble. And put it into a fridge and uh, we made it equal to the pills what you can see down from uh, Daniel Hitler it's like uh, you can see it is adopt or adopt very not really uh, the same meaning very important difference and this very yeah they are equal in the it, it is also non hierarchical gesture from our side. Just going through. And the important thing is that we also used again the laser um, um, installation that uh, Jano built while still being in the church. Uh, but we changed the, the text and it's also I think a statement kind of like changing something that used to represent, it used to be a symbol of uh, the Holy Trinity, God and the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit now turned into, I am who you are. Uh, and the religious kind of narrative was kicked, let's say, and became profound. Yeah, we profanized, profanized ourselves uh, with this, but I think uh, in the, very deepest level it's it means all the same but one thing like uh, you can see here's a trigger like triggering the the, the stone kind of a little techno moses and the 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 wires went through the whole gallery and the in the last um, room here was being amplified as a like kick drums kick drums in the space so it was like sound wise connected. So after these, like becoming really enigmatic and sort of like a, a whole quest for ourselves, like us being a quest for ourselves, uh, I think the most important thing that we need to show or talk about is the place itself where we are able to 
play these games uh, with each other and with uh, a lot of a lot of people. And this place is where we have a studio. It's AQB Art Quarter Budapest, and we've been here for almost more than ten years now. And we are really lucky and thankful for having this bubble. And the whole reason um, uh, that we stayed, I think, in Hungary is also important, is that because we have this place here, which is like a very international and very um, uh, like a flexible place with a very flexible and very kind owner who lets us do and experiment in the spaces of the building, whatever we want. Um, and uh, what? Mm -hmm. And in 2020, during or between the lockdowns uh, because of COVID, we uh, had the chance to make an exhibition in the mines, uh, which are underneath the building and going across all over the hill. Uh, and um, these tunnels that we have here are really special, I think. And uh, they were also uh, not really um, discovered before. And I don't think that like before there were like events like this, only a few parties, maybe like some illegal raves. Uh, but then we came together with Adrian Fish and uh, after a while, eight or seven other artists uh, who were close to us, uh, you, maybe because they were in AQB or maybe because we know them from before, but somehow really nicely, organically, we got drawn to each other, like this specific eight people. And uh, without any curatorial concept, let's say, uh, the place itself had like a really serious calling. Um, because of its really special um, um, environment. And we made this exhibition titled Mind My Mind. Um, and I think it was a very important exhibition for all the artists who were present and also to the people who were able to come here and see it. And um, I think it really caught something of the of the tight guys or how to say. Um, uh, and it was also a little bit like performative in a way. And we always wanted to, um, again, mix all these things. Um, what are you searching for? Just go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was lucky because during the, the lockdown, we had the chance to keep the exhibition open. And uh, I think this is why it got so much attention also because everything else was locked down and uh, not functioning, but we could keep this really underground thing going. And we had a lot of people coming uh, to see the exhibition. And also the opening event was really special. It was on Halloween's Eve and we threw like a really big party afterwards, right? the day before the third lockdown, I think. And uh, after this event, uh, I think our studio also and AQB also like uh, was really put on a map because of being able to be free uh, and open to people who, who wanted to experience, uh, experience something. So this, these times when we had the, the, the guided tours down in the tunnels, afterwards, we always had some gathering in the studio. And that's when our like precious, the newest uh, collective approach started to form, which we call Legion now. And uh, what we started to do is just draw together um, to do artworks and artworks not artworks just to do stuff together and play like children again and i think um yeah and also we 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 started to do like uh parties also in in the studio and different places in in aqb and um 
since Yano is playing all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we threw like block parties also with Dominica and uh, Trap uh, cooking nice foods <laughs> for us. Conceptual foods. Conceptual food. So, and the the, the <clears throat> closing event of this whole exhibition, I mean, back want to, wanted to go back to MMM exhibition, like. We was uh, able to make a party together with Exiles Record Records, uh, where for one day we a little bit altered the whole exhibition space, like uh, we opened it uh, after a little bit of break, and we put some artworks in different place and and uh, altered the the laser, what is what was pointed, because it was like. Uh, I am you when you read it, but uh, on the closing event, it turned into I am, which was a pointed end. And it was the first time actually from the start of corporation, the corporation, like after fucking 20 years, when we thought that everything is in position, everything was like, a, successful in a way like we felt like uh, okay after it like uh, people were there the, the artistic uh, installations was prepared nice and the concerts was super interesting the place was very unique under the ground like underground so we needed to have like 20 years in developing this whole idea of being in a collaboration and making Gesamtkunst like for us took almost 20 years to make and for the scene also to catch up let's say <laughs> to make somehow <laughs> Whatever. To file it to be. And then we uh, also did another installation in the tunnels for the Techno World Exhibition, which was here in AQB, an international exhibition. And we made these curtains. Uh, actually, we installed them as almost a set for a party, but there was no party. You just imitated. <laughs> just imitating the party. But eventually we had the chance to, like not so long ago, to throw a party under these settings after with, a year. With the, the community of the Finitech the Finit community, Hungary is like, uh, the, the name is for uh, Davoria. And they got one stage there. And as a legion, under the name legion, we made another stage. We got the more noisy experimental stage and they got the free tech stage, let's say, and we installed the, the place for, for that night and we used this curtain, but now in a real techno situation, just some photos. And uh, I would like to drop here some videos. I hope they are not, not uh, breaking. Maybe they are too, not too big, but two videos from our stage, let's say.
I think that was all, huh? So the moral of the story for us is uh, don't give up. <laughs> After 20 years, you can get something that you wanted, maybe. Um, and we're going to continue, I think. Uh, really thank you a lot for the for the talk all the images and explanations uh now i would like to open the uh, floor for the q a so please if you have any questions ask directly or just write them to the chat uh, maybe i will start maybe it was already answered during the during the talk but what was for you the like main input to start destroying the learning workshops Destroying, like destroying, like the mounting. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, the, like uh, the somehow we started as the as to to make an experiment on the the basic Christian identity of uh, being a husband and wife, and maybe it is the best form of the the ideal collaboration when you are not just uh, meet with the other on every Tuesday or something like that, but you are starting to know the other person and love the other person. And uh, that's for your whole life could be transformed into a collaboration in a while. And it somehow like started to, to work like this and somehow it is started to eat our personal life, somehow the whole, whole practice. And we figured it out that uh, the basic idea of uh, being the husband and the wife is something which is uh, almost also like in basic uh, hierarchical uh, and uh, like very like man uh, centered idea. And uh, some, how we started to uh, demounting this idea of, of the, the Yes, has a shine, marriage. marriage, like in the same time, we started to demounting uh, our practice of, uh, and uh, we let ourselves uh, go on, on different ways. We shared one topic, we agreed in one topic, but uh, Lila and me started to work separately. Uh, she was more into painting and experiment with the material. I was more like into conceptual things and technical stuff. And uh, for, for, for this thing, we freed ourselves up and uh, could, we could uh, go on, on further levels in our practice uh, according to our focus point. So it was needed to, to, to destroy uh, as it was uh, the, the institution of, of the the marriage and the institution of, of being hierarchical and to how to become like equal partners, of course, like between men and women, how to go further on the third, on the towards the third between us. Yeah, and also like not being afraid of changing, I think, uh, and just letting yourself go and, and Thrift, you know, I think. You satisfied? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we did an exhibition titled Kill Your Idols because when we were in couple therapy, they the what they told us that this learning sports figure is like an idol who is in between us, and that's why our marriage is not working. So we need to destroy this idol to get, you know, like ourselves function as man and a woman and have children and 
but you know, we, live but, a normal life. But we chose to destroy our, our marriage, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> now we kept the idol. No, we also destroyed the idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Destroyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you also point uh, to it during the uh, the talk, but there was also like something that I could experience with you, uh, and maybe you can uh, uh, talk more about that. And are the uh, drawing sessions that you are like doing lately? Mm -hmm. You, I have a presentation actually. Were you interested in uh, like uh, there was one? collaborative uh, uh, like drawing session exhibition online was just uh, uh, opened last week do you interested maybe i can i can go through this yes please and uh, you can see somehow just a minute oh sure mm -hmm. Yeah, it is now being shared. Okay, so the title is The First Day of the Devil. Is a first, day. first, first, first day of the devil is coming from a, a friend's ch child who, who, who said, like we, we showed him one work, what we did together with his father. And he, he pointed this title on it. Like my, my friend here is, a, <clears throat> is like, a, <clears throat> um, Robert Spitzmüller is the name for him, and he is uh, not not a, a not an artist. Let's say he is uh, more into like building houses and all, all the works what is needed requiring to to build a house. This is his profession, but always wanted to be or, or like have wanted to study in the art fields. But somehow it turned out he became like more 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 a, a soldier within the. Uh, Hmm. I mean, what was that? Sorry, I will. Like times. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I mean, like, like. He was really a soldier, but uh, so his life didn't turn that way. That he had the luxury of be, becoming an artist, but he always had this dream. But uh, when they caught up together with Yano again uh, after many many years. Uh, and he came here and uh... we started to work some we started to work like draw together like you you can imagine it like as an after party situation when you would like to do something and you just not satisfied with the party itself and you you can do the things and I, I'm just going through the works and it's really nice that uh, you had the chance to, with the Balloon Tunes Gallery, which is made by Mate Yonki. Uh, uh, and it's running for two years now, one and a half. Uh, it is the fifth chapter of the exhibitions there. You can uh, like uh, imagine this, uh, this uh, drawing sessions as uh, like I make one gesture and the guy makes one just ge gesture or if you are more than two, you can do also like going in rows. And somehow at one point, one of you says it is enough or it is uh, finished, ready. ready, then you put it away. And uh, this uh, kind of way gave us more than 600 drawings within the last two years. And uh, with this uh, series, what I put here into this structure, uh, like I, I wanted to experiment on what to do with these drawings after, like how to present them in an online uh, space. And I figured it out, maybe it's a structure of a real space or real gallery. I mean, like just the walls, you can see sometimes just symbolically, sometimes in very low quality real. And there's a dramaturgy somehow. Not just two of us made this works. Some of them was made the sessions, what he started with in his family, like with the daughter, a son, or, or others around him. So he also started as a franchise. <laughs> he also started some uh, collaboration with his uh, surrounding 
surroundings. This work was made in a party situation. I just went to a party in Crypto, Budapest, and I got some papers and, and uh, inks, uh, like pencils. What, what is this, like colored ink? Do you store? Uh, uh, markers. Markers. And just the uh, people, I, I just started to draw, and after five minutes, many people were there at the table, and almost uh, like 25 drawings were made. This is just one of them. Some of the works were just made by myself, but uh, it was a very big, big shift for me to to work in the in the way like automatic drawing, uh, automatic writing kind of way because I was really like conceptual how I how I word like I had to think on the thing before, I had to figure out everything, the, the material, the size, and why this material, and why not, and these things. And, and with this drawing sessions, somehow there is a awakening in myself, just to let myself go, to just do whatever. And it, it's very nice that some patterns are coming back, and some character is starting to be uh, okay, or like, like so. a show. So I think there's a big potential in it, <laughs> like uh, in a way of collaboration, because with total random people, you can also doing it. Like we, we did it with family members, total really random people when they just came to our studio, uh, when we had this uh, little house parties. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's just one one example. Yeah, I, I will maybe like uh, like to go more further in it because like what I really enjoyed when I had the chance to experience it was that. Uh, I'm sorry. You were also part of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, was the thing that there was basically like the the output was not the thing yeah? the thing was the process and also all the all the in betweenness all the like somehow uh small little accidents yeah in the language of bobros uh and uh this is in a way bringing me back to the very beginning of your talk where, where we are pointing to the times of the era when you were still uh, at the department at the university where are still even nowadays the master student logic of, of education so mm, maybe what i want to ask you like through your practice and also through these like collective events uh making uh like rave nights and so on and just like sharing your space and, and your time with people that are also like have completely nothing to do with with art or like artistic theory and practice uh is this also in some ways uh some like at that attitude or maybe it's like some kind of like motivation to uh, destroy the verticality of the master student attitude yes definitely definitely that our aim and also uh we are very happy not to be involved in the academic system uh, and we kept ourselves from it consciously, although it might seem tempting uh, in this very insecure uh, financial situation to take up a job and to go and teach. Uh, and uh, although many of our friends are doing that and it's really, I admire them, how can they do it? Because it's not about the students, why it's hard is always about the system. And well, maybe my idea of things would be that somehow you could uh, just make another system or just make not no system, but just do, do something, you know, and not having this, uh, this vertical system, um, but you were never gonna get a degree from our studio, you know. <laughs> or oh, who knows? Who knows? Um, <clears throat> just a minute. Just a second. 
But uh, we just got this book from Joel Miklos um, which is, uh, I had never, didn't have the time to look into it, but it's from Julius Kohler uh, and the amateur artist he was working with. And this is a really nice I book uh, showing like the practice um, that they were doing together with uh, like having this kind of like same idea of just getting together, uh, but I still have to look into this book, but I'm very happy. Thank you, Zorty. So I can recommend this. Yeah. Uh, yes, back to the audience. Uh, if there are any questions, just please feel free to ask or to write them down. And cliche question, what are the next steps or what are the next move of your practice? Uh, well, we're going to have a, I hope it's going to be a nice year next year because uh, um, we've been invited to curate a show uh, in a, a Eisenstadt, Kunstverein Eisenstadt. And uh, it's nice. Uh, uh, we never did this like you know we didn't really say it out loud never that we are curating something because that also suggests somehow kind of like this hierarchy but now we have the possibility with a uh, nice funding uh to make a show and uh, we already have invited artists and also uh, mario namaste as like helping out uh, in curation stuff but we don't imagine the show uh, like us telling people what to do or how to or what to bring, but also more like uh, this Legion kind of workshop idea. So probably we're gonna come together um, from time to time and develop something together. Um, as in a, as in a mental, it, 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 it would be kind of a mental illness. <laughs> the topic is mania or mental illness or um uh yeah well it's gonna be exciting to spend the uh, time together isolated and closed in a like a card <laughs> like a card mm -hmm. and like a mental institution <laughs> with many different people so that's what we are really looking forward to. And also we're gonna have a solo show in next October uh, here in Hungary uh, in a big space, uh, nice big space. So that's also exciting with also relatively nice budget, let's hope. Um, and I'm only emphasizing this because that's always a problem here to have money but it's to very develop nice that new work. Our practice is not really based on <laughs> funding. <laughs> nice funding, like uh, in, in the sense of uh, working with trash, we are billionaires. <laughs> but still, we're going to continue doing these events here, I think, um, from time to time. I think you cannot do it like really uh, too many times because it just uh, burns you out quite quickly because it takes a lot of effort to bring together uh, an event like this, what we had a few weeks ago. Yeah, always the problem, like many big effort just for one night. It's like not really affordable and in, in a capitalistic viewpoint. It's not really worth it, but that's why we are like, we like it so much it's so absurd actually yeah some concerts abroad brussels maybe <laughs> <laughs> like you get lost in forest uh, digging for minerals meeting yeah. you sometimes coming <laughs> back to budapest <laughs> Uh, I'm kind of asking myself if I should ask this question because it's in some way mm, pretty stupid, but like, you know, often when it comes to uh, interviewing artists or like people working in the field of art from like region that are in some way unstable, uh, there is always like to the forefront put it the like political situation of the 
of the of the country or the image of the courageous artist that is like put it into the front etc cetera, etc cetera, where the like aesthetic qualities of the art itself are like somehow put in like second category or not even mentioned uh but why i'm saying this is the question that will like be absolutely about that uh because like i spent summer at aqb i spent part of the summer with you uh also in like uh, local venues and local parties and in some way what was for me very unique uh was the like sense of a community or like really like a sense of a, of, of a like welcoming family and uh what i want to ask you is like do you need the struggle to build like spaces that are really open or like really like welcoming struggle i wouldn't say struggle i just would say you have to give the patience for it to form or give it time to form and be there i think yeah in our in our case like it, it, it for me it was like more than 20 years to to figure it out that the community don't want to be oppressed by you so uh, when you like give them freedom let's say you don't want anything from them and uh, then uh, they would like to stay somehow it's very simple but uh, for me it was a big adventure how how to focus on myself more and let them just be uh, super diverse and, and come whenever they would like to come and stay how long they would like to stay, not just here, but there in the situation, uh, like uh, to be open to whatever, collaborative or just uh, work or, or just uh, communication. We are really like to communicate with the younger generation, like those who are like uh, at the end of university or, 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 or and uh, even before and after like, um, showing them <laughs> what we did wrong or or like uh, just let them go come into our uh, aura let's say right not to became in distance or not acting like uh, somebody who is not reachable because whatever i don't know and if you just let them behave and do whatever they are nice <laughs> but that's also uh with the older generation i think uh it's important to build bridges between different uh times let's say so for us i think everybody is interesting mm -hmm. but these days they're younger more <laughs> i mean like uh, here, when you see the political like situation and you see the older, older generation, you have to find out that uh, they can be like, when you are super into the everyday politics and like to fight against in a way of protest. And I don't know, like uh, next year, me, um, hurt, hurt, hurt yourself and like somehow burn out because of the situation and like, like accusing the system, accusing the times, accusing people, why you cannot do whatever you would like to do. It's like, uh, for us, it wasn't a, a nice uh, example. example. And we like to be a little bit detached from the political situation, not because we are apolitical, we are, don't like to know what is going around, it's it's more like not just criticizing, but how to not not just reacting to the things like uh, like following the politicians and uh, showing what kind of uh, stone or little uh, um, bone bone they they <clears throat> throw to us like to reflect is means it means uh, always uh, following the one who is uh, giving you the topic or something like that. And we were fed up 
with this thing and somehow we wanted to say what is okay not just what is not okay and for this you you i think it is needed to be whole person to find out what could be the possibility of doing it different when you accusing all the time and uh, like you're criticizing all the time you don't have time and uh, energy to to find out the alternative way somehow so you are used by the system used by by the whole thing and you cannot use yourself for different purpose and for this i i had to detach myself and of course to work on a, a collaborative work or communities is, is political going underground is political of course but not it, it is not uh, important to mention all the time because then it is like a being stalled by the narrative of uh, politics like Orban thing you know like the other alternative can be for example I am thankful for Mr. Orban that uh, somehow I wake woke up that uh, I cannot rely on any other structures and system everything what I would like to see is up to myself like I have to become more and more conscious to became like an organizer or whatever is needed or required to make a, an event or whatever so in this sense struggle in this sense can be uh, like triggering but uh, i don't think it's like it's not bad yeah you 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 can find somehow the the, the good in that i mean i found it so the way it's like not to stare into the darkness but looking through the traces of light that are going through. <laughs> traces of darkness. <laughs> or opposite. Uh, hey, this was a very nice answer. Thank you for that. Because what, what I'm asking is uh, the, like now I'm in Berlin, which is like still being believed as the capital of, of culture or like club culture. And like very oftenly uh, you have like you have big fundings here, you will get like the most proper PA system, you will have always like the best CDJs, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And on, on the doors of the venue written like all this like uh like no homophobia welcome, no 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 but like very often it's like these things are only to just fulfill some kind of uh protocol. Mm -hmm. And in the way you cannot like it's, it's set up like in a very like consumeristic way. Uh, there is even like one really interesting writing, but I forgot the the name of the of, of the author. It's, and it's like written like everything that I learned about uh, techno capitalism I learned in Bergheim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So therefore, I was like asking that like the in some way the lack of like the official sources can create like in some kind of like environment that is really coming from the bottom from the uh from the bottom in which you can basically as you said Jan, like find your ways start to be more curious and ask more questions etc yeah definitely so this struggle gives you like independence in a way yeah yeah and we can see that uh a lot of stems of uh, younger people can come together as a group or as a collaboration in, in, within the, the electronic music uh, field. And they are organizing illegal parties in temporary spaces, like acting like nomads, uh, which is uh, super nice. And they are just pop up everywhere. And uh, so there are a lot of uh, gray zone here not not everything is like uh, organized and uh, like the protocol is not there as in berlin i think so there are there is a lot of potential to find out new spaces new people to collaborate with and, uh, and there is a not not so not so hard to to find a unique position for for for, for something uh, to be happen um, 
and they are not like centralized these kind of stems they, they are they can collaborate to each other and uh, like these days a lot of different events and uh, parties are, are, are happening around of course the financial financial part is very hard and they're being more and more harder so there is something to figure it figure out figure you have to figure it out how to how to maintain organizing with the with the sound system and stuff but uh, i think uh, we can so it's on hard or the situation we do. is uh, being solved in a way. So interesting times. <laughs> Question from the audience. Uh, we've seen your work, installation, and if I understood it correctly, some kind of performance. And my question is, which suits you better? Be like the observer of your work or being involved in it more as a performer? Oh, I would never want to observe myself. <laughs> no, but uh, I think uh, if you are doing it, like uh, then you, whilst you're doing it, uh, you have kind of like a different perspective of yourself. So you can only observe yourself while doing it. And that's, <laughs> that's really interesting. Like to read like, about yourself kind of like in it and after it. There is a big difference actually, like uh, in, in the electronic music or, or the, the party situation and the installation of a gallery or a different kind of space. Because uh, when you make the installation, you put it there and the, the reflections from the people is like not, not directly coming back. Sometimes years are, are needed to, to meet somebody and he said like, oh, that work wasn't that good. Or like, I like that work, I don't know. But uh, within the, the concert situation in a party, is like uh, it is in 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 the in the moment in the second. Let's say like uh, you can receive it as a like you are in the situation with the others and uh, in the same same moment and somehow you can feel the community at once like uh, and you don't have this perspective within the the, the exhibition somehow. Some some guy like uh, Mister. Gergo Sinova, our friend who is a painter, said that there is no applause in, in the in the artistic field, but in the party scene. I don't know. Somehow I can agree. I don't like to go to our own opening, actually. I don't like to be present in my own exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 it's her uh, side. I like it actually because I prefer it, prefer it to that form and I would like to see it, if it is there, like uh, to be in the, the moment when it is show up and uh, like to see that everything is in order. You know, yeah, like but then it's, the work is done and the lecture, but then just it's to meet like people. Dead. <laughs> yeah, 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 you are right. It's a, in, dead to me. Yeah, like, museums are dead, like as Boris Groys says, the, the place for the dead. <laughs> Without the, the, the possibility of resurrection. Yeah, actually, you no, know, like the session is being recorded. So, in like a few weeks, I will ask you to uh, watch it so you will be forced to <laughs> look on yourself. <laughs> Oh, we don't mind. <sighs> yeah, actually, like people are slowly leaving, and uh, we we are already uh, almost two yeah. hours in the in yeah. the talk. So uh, maybe it's the time to say a big ciao to each other and yeah, <laughs> big ciao, big ciao, <laughs> ciao, ciao. So, yeah, Lila, one more time, very, very thank you for uh, being with us here tonight. Also to the participants to, to be here and to listening for the time. And yeah, hope to see you soon and hope to see you on the dance floor. <laughs> you too.
Definitely. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.